Welcome to AF Siebert Chapel in the 2013 Baccalaureate Service. To ensure that everyone may enjoy this event without distraction, we request that at this time you turn off all cell phones, cameras, and other electronic devices. Digital camera and cell phone displays are particularly distracting to those around you, so please have them off throughout the performance. Thank you.
We will rejoice and be glad in it. We will celebrate the path that has brought us to this place. We will bless the name of the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God, who is faithful and full of compassion. We will sing to our God a new song, for we have come this far by faith. God has called us to walk together in a light of grace and truth. The Lord, our light and our salvation, we are not afraid. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. You know, we Lutherans jump up and down quite a bit. Being Scandinavian, we need that to keep our blood going. 
I'm pleased to welcome you to A.F. Siebert Chapel and to Carthage College. Those of you who, most of you are very familiar with these, this domain, but it's always appropriate to welcome you back. Just one announcement, I promise, this whole morning, and this is it. And it's a happy one, a very happy announcement. Through this past year, the Carthage community has worked together, student groups and congregations like this one this morning, to finance a well in Ethiopia. This is a project of Lutheran campuses all across North America. It's called Water to Thrive. These are deep water wells, permanent wells, marked by GPS, which we will identify on our website eventually. They cost $5,000 a piece, but in the interests of humanitarianism, People do need water, you know. In the interests of health, people need fresh water. In the interests of peace, people fight for centuries in bloody terrorism over water. We are dedicating ourselves to placing permanent sources of water in this arid land. And I can announce today that we did it. We have surpassed our first goal of $5,000. How's that for good news? Those of you in the balcony will find in the pews leaflets describing Water to Thrive and offering envelopes. We will not have a collection during the service, but as you leave here, you can join in our second well project already passing $700. Ushers will be waiting for you at the doors. That's my one and only announcement, I hope. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal, three in one, and we praise your power, majestic, one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us all, adversity, and bring us at least, at last, into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and 22 through 31. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights, beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates, in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth, when he had not yet made earth and fields, or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord.
The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with our God through Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hopes of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and that character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. 
A reading from Romans 5, 1 through 5. The word of the Lord. honor for all of us in Carthage Choir to be here with you celebrating the class of 2013. The piece that we have chosen for today's service is the Gloria from the Coronation Mass by one of the greatest composers of all times, at least in the Western world, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Now, in the time when he wrote this piece, it was common to have the soloists for the piece taken from the choir. So following that custom, what I have decided is to have all the seniors, the graduating seniors in the front of the choir singing all the solo parts. And not only that, but also a member of the choir, Becky Ryan, will be conducting the piece today.
Please stand if you're able. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Mr. President, 
Last February, you asked me to speak today and disclose that I would be receiving an honorary degree this afternoon. I, I was astonished and deeply grateful. But I'm having some second thoughts. First of all, at the beginning of May, the Carthage website described baccalaureate service. They said, this is a religious service for graduating seniors where the person who receives an academic degree delivers a farewell address. <laughs> <laughs> At my age, that has traumatic effect. <laughs> but I want to correct the record. I, I have spent 21 years of my 82 here at Carthage, and I ain't going anywhere. <laughs> but that wasn't the only surprise that gave me second thoughts. I noticed that it's Memorial Day weekend, and I figured nobody really wants to be here. And then I looked at the church calendar and discovered it was Holy Trinity Sunday. What? Who knows what that is? So you have invited me to give a farewell address about a subject nobody cares of to a reluctant audience who would rather be in the park grilling brats. Well, I'm going to try to piece some of this together from the scriptures that were read earlier today. First of all, Donna started us off beautifully. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And it is, isn't it? And Emily followed with that beautiful poem from Proverbs where wisdom speaks about God creating her. Well, that's the first lesson of Holy Trinity. Things began. Not a brain buster, is it? Things began. And people of faith call that God. The Father, the Creator. Easy enough. But you know, it could be scary. Suppose this Creator God washed His hands of us after putting us in a vehicle at the edge of a huge hill, giving us a shove, and sending us down without steering wheel or brakes, and went off to do his own thing. Some people talk like that. Or it could be even worse. It could be a malevolent God who has arranged this celestial video game where we're at the mercy of unknown hazards behind every obstacle. And we have to struggle to figure out the rules of the game and get the most points. Horrible idea. Well, Brian straightened us out on that. The message about redemption. Did that wake anybody up, huh? Brian had a message about redemption. He, he said that this God is involved, this God cares for us, this God sent a Savior so that we may have peace in our hearts, peace in our minds, peace in our future. And that is called by believers God the Son. Well, it still wouldn't be enough, because all of that is ancient history, isn't it? Believers are sure this happened. Now, if we had had a YouTube video of the resurrection, wouldn't that be neat? Think of the hits to watch the stone blasting away from the tomb. But you know, that too would get old, wouldn't it? I, I bet Justin Bieber and Molly Cyrus would have outdistanced the hits 
by this time on YouTube, Edith, my colleague here at the chapel, completed the story for Holy Trinity. She talked about the fact that this God didn't walk away. This God didn't just get assigned to do something in history. This God is right here with us now and today and in all of our future, and that is God the Holy Spirit. So there you have the summary of the three lessons of Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I find that consoling. St. Paul the Apostle was an astute, educated professor with tenure. Don't you all wish? With tenure in one of the most celebrated academic institutions of the day. Not only that, he had been selected, elected, appointed, or whatever, to the ruling council of the national government. He had it made. He was a scholar, a student of language, a student of history, and an accomplished poet. And in one of his most famous poems, he concluded by saying, Now faith, hope, love, these abide, but the greatest of these is love. That's surprising because this astute scholar who gave up his tenure, gave up his privilege, gave up his protection, gave up his security to go out and suffer for the content of what he wanted to teach and ultimately face persecution and execution. You would have thought what he taught was the greatest. Faith. Right? No. No, love. Or suffering those persecutions, that rejection, and writing to people who were equally persecuted and threatened and in danger of their lives, you would have thought that hope would have been the most important. No. Love. I see this, and I think Paul saw it, as a kind of a chronological continuum, because faith looks at the past. Faith has to do with the past. The believer is sure that all of this is done, and it happened, and it's complete. That gives the believer a chance to look to the future, not with fear and trepidation, not with uncertainty, but with certitude that the future is in God's hands. Hope is secure. This faith is the assurance of things hoped for, which means that all of this, God being present in our lives, focuses on the here and now, where faith and hope are expressed. Because the believer is freed from fear and concern, secure in what is over and done with and established, and now is at liberty to express God's love through the believer's life right here and now. That's the message of Holy Trinity, and I see it applying to Memorial Day. Is this a stretch? I don't think so. I think that uh, when we memorialize others, we do it best when we live honorably to make a better world in their name. We commence this afternoon a future identified as a completion of the past, but it is based on the present. It's based on who we are now. May I stop this lecture right now? I'd like to tell a story about my first girlfriend. (laughs) My students are saying he had a girlfriend. (laughs) My colleagues are saying he can remember. And everybody is saying, his poor wife. (laughs) She's here today, but she's not embarrassed. She's heard this so many times over the past 53 years of our marriage. Bored, maybe, but not embarrassed. (laughs) And there she is with our three children and their spouses and with our three grandchildren. I'd like to have my friends here at Carthage meet you folks. 
Fine. 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 All right. Now that was embarrassment. <laughs> but Rosemary, no one would ever forget Rosemary. I was a sophomore in high school. She was a senior, actually. Rosemary was athletic. She was a member of the gymnastic team. She was a captain of the gymnastic cheerleaders. <laughs> Captain of the gymnastic cheerleaders. I've got my friend back there who's rescuing our eardrums. She was out front in every football and every basketball game. I never saw a game. I was watching Rosemary. And she was a scholar. As a senior, she had earned a summer field scholarship that's four years all expenses paid to the University of Kansas. We met as members of the debate team, and debate was big in Kansas back in those days. We used to travel overnight to these tournaments. Rosemary had this long, below-the-shoulder hair, and I want you to think about this, Brian. Um, <laughs> we'd get to sit in the back seat of the car on the trips, you know, and I could... <laughs> nuzzle in her hair. <laughs> Our president's getting a little worried about where this is going. <laughs> I was astonished that Rosemary would date me. So were all our classmates. <laughs> we went everywhere together. And that's what brings me to the story. Because one Friday evening, Rosemary called and said, you know, there's a party over. I said, oh, I know you've got your act together, but this is a horrible weekend for me. I have two tests and a term paper coming up next week. Some of you can resonate with that, can't you? And there is no way I can go anywhere this weekend. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. She said, well, is it all right with you if I go with Rob? All right, if you go with Rob. She said, well, it won't be a date. He's driving, and there'll be a whole car full. Well, of course I don't mind. Not at all. Well, here now the story turns serious, and I'm sorry to intrude on your celebration. Rob was not a skilled driver. After the party that night, he was going down State Avenue, which is Highway 41 in Kansas City, Kansas, drove by Kensington Park, which is the place in later years I spent many seasons coaching ball, and he lost control of his car, crashed through the chain-link fence, went down a steep embankment, and hit a huge ancient oak tree. Rosemary died. It was horrible. At that time, I was wishing I had done so, too. Her parents had lost their only child, but they were very kind to me. They invited me to stand there in the funeral home next to the coffin as people paid their respects. It was terrible, hour after hour. It was a big school, about 5,000 students, and I think everybody came with all their friends, and, of course, Rosemary's family and friends were there, too. On and on and on and on. They told me later that the line to enter stretched twice around the block. And I heard the most incredibly stupid things, people saying, Oh, she was God's little angel, and he needed her. If I had believed that, I would have hated God the rest of my life. But worse, worse things than that. 
They would come up and say, oh, she could have been anything she chose to be. She was beautiful. She could have been an actress. She was smart. She could have been an attorney. She could have gone into law. She could have gone into politics. She could have influenced this whole world. She, she was a science student, and she could have developed medicine. She could have done this. She could have done that. She could have done that. And she could have done, she could have been, and I lost it. I shouted at the top of my lungs a profanity I wouldn't dare repeat tonight. And I said, stop it! And the room grew quiet. And I said, stop it! We are not here to mourn what she could have been. We're here in gratitude for who she was. And I burst into tears. And her family comforted me and thanked me. Well, my friends, It's true that what you can become knows few limits. You have been gifted by our Creator with skills and opportunities that only a minuscule part of the world's population enjoys. You shall make us proud, every one of us, But we don't love you for what you can become. We love you for who you are. My prayer is that on each day to come, you shall be able to say with satisfaction, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
beg your pardon. Let us uh, confess the faith of the Christian believers or hear it in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Spirit of the living God, 
You have inspired our dreams and have guided our paths toward their achievement. Go with us as we leave this academic home and enter a larger world of learning. Let your presence continue to be our guide so that we may represent our convictions with honor, serve our neighbors with love, and complete our journeys satisfied that we have walked with you. Lord of all, model of love, many minds here today are struggling with significant changes. Many hearts are torn between past and future. You, who demonstrated love beyond all imagining, are the one who can support us with awareness of continuity. Help us practice love so that we may experience it. Strengthen us to serve our neighbor so that we may know ourselves to be sisters and brothers of them and of you and never be alone. Gracious creator, we are because of you. You have given and you sustain. Our prayers of thanksgiving are heartfelt. Our gratitude becomes evident as we seek to live responsible lives. As we prepare to bid Godspeed to the class of 2013, we also mark the completion of profoundly valuable service by several of our faculty colleagues, including Dave Brunn, Charlotte Chell, and Woody Hodges. We rejoice in their accomplishments, we cherish their gifts, and ask for your benevolent care for each of them as they retire from our community of service. Continue to bless Carthage and strengthen us to rise to your vision. Lord, in your mercy. Please rise and join with me, if you are so in enabled, we in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us now into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I ask the members of the class of 2013 to please be seated. The rest of us, those who would like to add our personal blessings to their future, may remain standing. And you may turn if necessary. You may find your favorite graduate. Raise your hand in blessing and join me in the prayer. May God bless you and sustain you in this, your graduation day. May the creator of this vast universe keep you safe as you go forth from this place that has nourished your mind and your soul. May the Almighty look down upon you and give you success in all your endeavors, courage in all your struggles and challenges, understanding in all that is new to you, wisdom to choose what is right and to do what is good, perseverance in all you undertake, serenity and peace in the knowledge that you are not alone, that you are loved. May the Lord of all look kindly upon you this day and forever for this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.